It's just like that bully in school. If you don't phase him, he gonna always take your lunch money. But you gonna get tired one day of him taking your lunch money. You gonna wanna eat and you gonna walk up to him and say, look, you gonna have to beat my ace cause I'm eating today. I want to talk about a video that I just posted on my TikTok page when I was talking about how the body responds to threats. Hi, King. How, how the body responds to threats and it gets into a fight or flight mode. And I was talking about this as it pertains to you tapping into your superpowers, you tapping into your God self and able to defend yourself, able to rescue your baby if your baby was to be, you know, underneath a car this is where we get all of these powerful um, abilities to lift up a car to run really fast and outrun a dog or something that's attacking us when we're in a fight or flight mode but the interesting thing about it is the butterflies that we get in our stomach when we're in that mode and these butterflies in our stomach is because blood is moving to your extremities and giving your muscles your arms and your legs more um, powers and blood is being rushed there to support your superpower to help you in that particular threatened or dangerous environment but this butterfly effect which was interesting in that video is the same effect that we'll get when we meet people <laughs> so the topic of this particular video is are you ignoring yourself again because when we meet people in a physical reality, our body, we, we already hooked up to infinite intelligence, God, our subconscious mind, which knows all things and is experienced all things, and actually sends out a signal to your hair that's standing up on your, um, on your arms, through the chill bumps, to the, to the blood that's flowing in your veins. When you see other expressions of light, God, you're getting a signal. And sometimes that signal, people will say, um, Oh, I got butterflies when I met him Oh, or her. Oh, she seems so interesting, but I don't even remember her name. She made me feel so nervous. I just stood there and I couldn't talk. I couldn't remember my name. All these things that people are saying, hey, you love first. Thank you for being here. All these things that people say, if you pay attention to the, to the weird type things that these people are saying when they meet somebody, they talking about being in danger. They talking about the fight or flight mo uh, moment in their life when they're meeting some of these people. So what I'm saying here is you already got your answer when you met that person, whether or not this person was for you or this person was triggering some old trauma that you had already experienced. Thank you, babe. You've already experienced this old trauma already and you identified your body, which is infinite intelligence, which is your avatar, which is your God self. It identified this here feeling when it saw that expression of light that you were looking at, when it saw that fine man. It put you in flight or fight mode so that you can run away, but you decided to stay. So since you stayed, you're going to stay in flight or fight mode. So now when you hook up with them or they don't call you or, or they um, hit it and quit it, you still going to have them butterflies. You're still going to feel like, like, what, what do I do? It's almost like you're going to always be on the edge when you don't trust yourself, when you're ignoring yourself. Because the real relationships that come, not just for a season, that come that you are joined to or tied to, they don't feel like nothing. You might pass those people by. Those people might be boring or seem so calm or like, you know, that, that's my buddy. You know, that's just my friend. What do you mean? I don't like him. No, that's just my friend. We'll say. But those people right there, they're not giving you the fight or flight um, adrenaline rushing your body. Those people right there, they're not tied to trauma, so they feel familiar. They feel like home is supposed to feel familiar is what I'm telling you. Healthy relationships are supposed to feel familiar to you instead of giving you an adrenaline rush where you feel like you need to run, where you can't talk, where you, need to, where you feel like you should fight. 
because your body is healing you. It's telling you in that moment, hey, you remember so-and-so? Yeah, that's so-and-so, but they're just in another avatar body. Don't let us go back and experience this again. Don't let us go back to experience this here fighting again. We just did that with so-and-so. We did it with Paul. This here is Peter. Peter is really Paul. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to give you this feeling, this gut feeling, <laughs> that you're about to rinse and repeat again because you haven't evolved. Because had you evolved, you would have walked past him and known he wasn't good for you because I'm giving you the signal. Since you asked for a better relationship, a healthier relationship, I'm sending you the signal to walk away from him and keep on getting to know yourself and being familiar with yourself. Keep on listening to me. Keep on listening to your internal GPS system. Don't ignore me again. I'm your body and I can sense other bodies and other expressions of light. But, but hey, hold up. If you do ignore me, we'll go, we'll go and repeat that lesson again. That means because you ain't ready for a greater version of yourself, no way. So we got to go and experience this thing all over again. You didn't learn a lesson. Because had you learned the lesson, you wouldn't have felt this here feeling. You wouldn't have been bamboozled into going against how you feel. Had you learned the lesson, you understand that how I feel really, really matters. And if it feels like I should run, maybe I should walk away. If I have a emotions tied to this person like this here, maybe it is not for my greater good. Maybe if I feel fear, maybe that means he or I not in alignment. So there's still more work to do. And it's okay if I walk away. Because once I get in alignment, I'm going to be right there in alignment with the things that I want. Because I can't accept the things that I really, really want. And that are really predestined for me to partake in. Yeah, that's how I set up my little avatar self. That's how I set up my journey of becoming. That I just, all I got to do is listen to my internal GPS and it's never going to steer me wrong. It's going to keep me on the path of evolving to my higher self, to my God self. Because that's what I came forth in physical form to, to do, to remember, to rejoin, to remember that I am. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of us forget. A lot of us forget when we're in relationships who we are because sometimes if we get in those chaotic relationships, we forget who we are so much that we get off of the throne. We get off of the throne and put somebody else in a pedestal. And look up to somebody else outside of us as if they're God in our kingdom. <laughs> instead of still, instead of still reverencing your I am or my I am. I am this expression of love that I'm experiencing in this relationship. I am a magnet. That's how I was able to draw this relationship to me. I am. <laughs> So I really, really want to just jump on and talk about that for a moment, about relationships, about the most important relationship that you're going to ever have is going to be the one with yourself, about the avatar itself, the God body self is so powerful, sending you signals, not just for fear, not just for danger, but it's sending you signal about how your cells of your body doing, sending you signals about whether you're in alignment or not, it's sending you thoughts. Sending you constant thoughts, constant frequencies, constant vibrations. Letting you know what, 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 if anything, if there's turbul turbulence in any area of your life, you always going to get the signal first. <laughs> hey, Erica, how you doing, babe? You always going to get the signal first because you are tapped into all things. And life is happening through you, not to you. It's happening through you. So this ties into discernment too now. This ties not just in relationships where you know you're creating a union. This ties into financial relationships too. This ties into the relationship to just the high and by relationships that you have with, with, with your neighbors or just random strangers. You are always picking up a signal. But oftentimes we don't listen to that signal. But here's how you can practice, how I practice rather, on picking up that signal. Hey, spiritual, thank you for being here. How I practice a stick picking up that signal and being in alignment is 
is through mindfulness. And for those of you who um, don't like to meditate, it ain't about long durations of being still. It's about just still moments sometimes. And so by being able, like say for example, I'm in a room right now. And in this room, if you were not here, I can close my mouth and I can close my eyes and I can feel how I feel. And in feeling how I feel, I'm going within and I'm feeling how my heart feels. I'm checking in with like organs of my body, with, with, with how my head feels, how my thoughts are flowing. I'm doing a check in. And so when you begin to check in on how your state of body or mind feels, then when you walk out the door, like if there was somebody in this next room right here, and I walked out the door and I looked at them through the windows of their soul, I'm looking at them in the eye, I already know now how I feel. And when I look at the windows through their soul, through their eye, now I know how they feel. And this is how you can practice with your, your spiritual gifts of discernment, clairvoyance. You are able to look at somebody in their eyes and you can see you can read them this is how people read this is how i read i could look at a picture of a person and i can tell you based upon what i feel because this is part of knowing yourself and to know yourself is to know god your gut self so when you know yourself now you know when you're looking at another reflection everything about your reflections because you already know how yourself feels you already know if you carry in fear inside of here you already know if you carry in hate or you 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 know discombobulated or if you have sickness you know because you spend time with self and so it's so important to spend time with self that way you when you experience in any of your other reflections it's almost like your discernment clicks kicks in and you you're just like hey I, I was in good spirits. Um, you know, I was clear-minded. I don't have any health issues. I'm not bothered. I don't have a nasty attitude. I'm not bitter. I'm not this. I'm not that. And you, but, but, but then when you showed up, I felt grief. That's not my grief. That grief I feel is coming from you. You don't have to say this out loud. You're just picking up on the signal of the grief. Because you feel it, not because you're thinking it based upon no trauma. I'm talking about heal from trauma. I'm talking about know thyself. I'm talking about evolved on a journey. And you know because you sit with yourself and you practice this type of mindfulness and this type of discernment. This is how you get even better at it when you just pay attention to people. And you feel the things that you never felt inside of yourself when you were sat alone with yourself. And so then when you begin to practice this here and begin to do this here often, now you're heightening your gift. Now you're, you're not ignoring yourself. It's so important that you don't ignore yourself because yourself is infinite intelligence. Yourself is where all the answers are to everything that you need in this journey. Yourself came equipped with all things. I know, I know we on TikTok and you might think you, you, I'm not equipped with a man or I'm not equipped with a woman. I'm not equipped with the money that I need. I'm not equipped with the house you need. You came equipped with everything you needed, God, inside of your mind. That's where it's all hidden at. Yeah, inside. Oh, thank you, Tiffany. Thanks for knowing us, babe inside of your mind you came forth with the crystals fluid inside of your head in the skull of your head that crystals fluid to secrete when you wanted to become the god self you came forth with it already you came forth with human imagination yeah you came forth with that already you came forth already with a heart chakra an electromagnetic form of energy that is powerful enough to unclog all chakras. At least you, at least you had, if you had every last chakra pool of energy clogged up from trauma, you came forth with a heart. And when you opened that chakra pool of energy, it was able to open up all other chakra pools of energy and get you in balance. Yeah, you, 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 you came forth. <laughs> With a subconscious mind that has the ability, once again, to connect to the superconscious. 
you have Akashic Records. Yeah, yeah, you have that. You have gold inside of you. You have the ability to secrete your own dimethyltryptamine inside of you. You have consciousness inside of you. You have serotonin inside of you. You have that carbon, your carbon footprint, all of this is inside of you. You have the ability to open up your own first eye. All of this is inside of you. And so these are like your superpowers, right? These are, you even have the ability, just like Jesus in the parable, that was all about you. Yeah, you have the ability to turn the water into wine, which means you have the ability to heal your own self and resurrect your own self and cleanse your own self, your own blood, and purify it back to the old type blood, the Anunnaki type blood. Because guess what? You are the Anunnaki too. <laughs> you are all that exists. Nothing exists but you. <laughs> and just like you might, we might run to sometimes the crystals and the, oh, the amethyst is so pure and it is so, it's so, I reverence the am amethyst because it's like the royal priesthood and it's, it's, it's so powerful and we go to the clinic courts and we go to the roads and we go to the um, term tourmaline and, and all of these different types of crystals. But you are always the most powerful crystal that you have ever owned. And everything that you've been looking for is within you when you stop ignoring yourself. And so in this new season, this new age, it is the perfect time to stop ignoring yourself when you meet people. Stop ignoring yourself when you are given a hunch. Stop ignoring yourself when you have those habitual thoughts. <laughs> stop ignoring yourself. And sometimes the fear, the fight or flight mode, we created it through our thoughts. Sometimes it is our chaotic thoughts that have us fearful about other people, right? Because it all starts, life happens through you first. So, so sometimes we'll say something like, but I'm afraid to, even though none of your reflections here, you, this is your own fear, but I'm afraid that maybe, maybe y'all die alone. Why is that? Because you spend most of your time thinking about how horrible it is to be alone, maybe. And so now you conjured up your own fear. Now you put yourself in a fight or flight mode when you ain't even with nobody. Now when you do go out, now you don't even know how to react or respond to people. Now you are stunning your own group. Now in your mind, you set up a law that got you afraid. <laughs> Got you in this mode and you are actually pushing people away because your habitual thoughts, you sitting up think, thinking, oh, nobody ain't gonna come talk to me. Nobody don't hear this though, but you, 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 you paying attention to your chaotic thoughts. Nobody gonna talk to me. I don't think I'm pretty enough. Maybe they think, maybe they think I'm boring. Maybe they think, oh, he's handsome, but I would never be his type. And, um. I must, I'm going to have to do some some major things to get somebody like that to like me. So, so sometimes our thoughts, when we at our lower self, when we low frequency, and we don't realize that we're creating this thing. Sometimes our thoughts could be so chaotic. But it only takes you having a new thought. Because like I said, you came with everything you needed, equipped to handle any situation. But it's like you're sending out a signal that can't come back to you null and void. So if you're sitting out that signal via, via a habitual thought, that habitual thought, even though it's not the most powerful, it you spoke life in it. You spoke life in it, so it had, it can't turn back, come back to you void, God, because you're God and you're creating this reality. So sometimes we got to sift through our own habitual thinking, our own thoughts, and let a new mind be in us. If, if, if we want this here signal to come back to us, not null and void, but but send, you send it out and, and it's supposed to do what you send it out to do. So it got to come back to you the same crappy way you sent it out. So if you change that, that signal you send it out and then you find out that your relationships will change. That, that, that you begin to get back on the pedestal of God again. That really simultaneously, what you're doing is you're breathing life back into your own self. What I'm saying here is you're breathing life back into your cells, C-E-L-L-S, because the cells of your body are alive. And so when you speak, 
you are really first speaking to your cells, C-E-L-L-S, the cells of your body. But a lot of us are ignoring ourselves of our body and we're casting them away and we're sitting out a thought and we're saying how dare my life is like this what happened why does so and so have it better than me why this why that but back to what i said god you have everything you need because even a question if you need it answered god never asks itself a question that he or she don't already know the answer to so you have the answer to this it's, it's within you god and if you ask yourself why is my life like this instantly through thought since you are hooked to infinite intelligence your mind will give you a reason why why am i not rich why am i not why don't i have 20 billion dollars in my account right now ask yourself that if that's what you desire in your journey why why am i not in a relationship ask yourself that if that's what you desire in your journey why why am i sick ask yourself that if you desire that in your journey why and you will immediately get an answer now see here's the thing we're talking about trusting ourselves we're talking about not ignoring ourselves now here's the thing don't ignore your answer <laughs> because it is your answer and it is true then you never can ask yourself a question that you don't already know the answer to now some of us will spit that answer out and be like oh it can't be that it can't be hell no it can't be so if we were to ask ourselves why am i why am i sick and we get a question, I mean, an answer that says, well, yeah, yeah, hey, it's been eating chilling since you was two years old. How about you eat some, some, some fruits and vegetables? Or how about, how about you, you think more positive? How about you stop hating? But some of us would be like, oh, I ain't gonna trust myself. No, it can't be that. It can't be that because I should be able to eat anything that I want to eat. And I could, I don't care. I'm God. I, I should be able to hate his ass if I want to hate his ass. And, and I should be able to be all right. So Joe Blow hate so-and-so and look at him. He walking. But I'm bedridden. <laughs> See, when you get your answer back, you gotta, you gotta be like, okay, and be ready to change your frequency in order for the signal that you are emitted, emitting to come back to you in another form. But here, here is insanity. We send out the same signal every day, sometimes for a long time in our journey, because we be repeating, we be on rinse and repeat, and we send out the same signal every day. But then we expect to have different results from the same signal the same habitual thoughts we mostly think the same darn thoughts every day until we program or reprogram our subconscious mind so every day we think it oh little old pitiful sick ace me oh i don't have no money i'm just trying to make it where am i checking let me put this light bill in my bible let me see if jesus go fix it this time we say the same thing over and over on rinse and repeat rinse and repeat rinse and repeat it is time to listen to yourself god <laughs> when you gonna be silly listen to yourself god <laughs> you know in church and religion when i was in religion they would often say prayer prayer is like asking But when you stop praying, that's God's way of letting you receive, right? <laughs> so there's a time to pray or meditate or whatever it is you do. But then there's a time to refrain from meditating and listening to yourself. Yeah, it's a time for you to send out a question to your subconscious mind. Why am I like this but then there's also a time for you to listen to what your subconscious mind had said the answer was oh because your ass is stiff neck and you don't want change nothing that's why why am i still in the same place in life why am i doing this over and over oh because you ain't never dared to do it would be nothing different in your mind that's the simple answer and so, so now you know, you know how to ask the question, you know how to get your answer. So now it's about you receiving and you doing something different. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I behaved as a child, I thought like a child. But when I became, I put away those childish things. 
we can't expect to, to evolve in Christ if that's where you were in. You can't expect to evolve in spirituality if that's what you're in. You can't expect to evolve in quantum jumping to that quantum field of the things that you want. Least you change your mind. It's, it's, it's all up in here. It ain't going to be out here. It's going to be you changing your mind. This is what the biblical text was telling you the whole time. It was always about a renewing of the mind. Let this mind be in you. Whatsoever things that are lovely, whatsoever things that are just, whatsoever things that appear, if they have any virtue in them, think on these things. But if you're thinking on these things, and these are habitual thoughts, all of these things are things that are inside of you. It's nothing outside of you. It's you checking in with you. It's you checking in with how you feel. It's you checking in with what you're thinking. It's you checking in. You always must check in. We often are bamboozled in a physical reality. That, oh, I got to check in with my teacher. I got to check in with the judge. Check in with my boss. Check in with my mom. Check in with my children. Check in with president check in check in check in all of these check ins are out there well, when was the last time you checked in here <laughs> when was the last time you said Ew. how are we living today stomach how are we digesting food kidneys how are we filtering you know you can heal your body like this here, loving on yourself, checking in with yourself. Kidneys, you've been doing such a good job. Oh, I love it. I love it when I'm when I'm drinking my coke and the water, kidney. I could just I could just feel you, kidney. Mm -hmm. Let me give you some more weight. I'm running out, kidney. I'm being good to you. I'm checking into you, kidney, because I love you so. Because I know every day you're working to feel to me. You're working to feel to me and keep me in balance. Oh, I love what you're doing for my, look at my skin, y'all. That's my kidneys, y'all. I done checked in with my skin. I done checked in with my organs in my body. Did you check in? <laughs> oh, yes. I checked in so much with mine that I said to mine, I said, hey, guys. Hey, guys, guess what we're going to do? We're going to go on a 90-day fast. Oh, I don't know. I just want to do it. I just want to put my mind to do it. Mine, I need you to cooperate. I need you to cooperate. Sometimes I know you be tripping out. You be wilding out. You be telling me that I'm hungry, but baby, we going on a 90-day fast. You going to eat when I say we going to eat. <laughs> yeah, I like to check in. When was the last time you checked in? On the 29th of this month, it's going to be the end of my 90-day fast. I'm almost there. Today's the 22nd. Oh, my. My mind is ready. My mind is ready <laughs> to do what I said it's going to do. Yeah, because I checked in. My kidneys, they, they've got a break. I told I told my kidneys, I told my liver, hey, guys, I'm going to give you a break. And I'm gonna, I told my stomach, too. I said, hey, guys, I'm going to give you a break. I'm going to stop digesting all of this here food. And I'm going to eat a lot of liquids. And I want you to do what you do best. I want you to clean up house, baby. And I want to feel you when we clean up house. I want this to be fun. Yeah, because I know you're alive. And I know you sometimes in the past was robbing Peter to pay Paul to keep me alive because I used to eat me some pork chops. Yeah, I used to eat me some red beans and rice. Yeah, I used to eat those. I used to love me some steak and potatoes. But hey, guys, hey, guys, I know your life. I'm going to check in. And I'm going to give you a break. I'm going to see if you know how to do this thing. I'm going to see how we roll on default mode. I'm going to see if you know how to, to um, create those white blood cells. Yeah, to heal my body. Yeah, because I'm, I'm checking in. And when I check in with you, I'm going to lay down in bed. And I'm going to close my eyes. And I'm going to be so caught up into you that I'm going to feel you working. And when I feel you working, I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, I feel you. You're doing a good job. <laughs> mm -hmm. When I go to the restroom and I urinate or, or whatever I do in the restroom, I'm, I'm going to be like, thank you. Thank you for taking care of me. Thank you. I love you. You did a great job here because I check in. I check in with my organs. I check in with my cells. I check in with my blood vessels. I check in. I check in with my hair. I check in with my skin. I check in with my heart. I check in. I check in so much. Tell anything out here, anything out here, I know that is maybe separate from me. I know that it's inside of here telling me, hey. Hey, since, since you care so much about me, we care so much about you as within, so without. So, hey, I'm going to send you a signal and let you know, hey, don't go over there. I'm going to send you a signal and let you know, uh, 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 nah, we don't need to talk to him. I'm going to send you a signal. 
let you know oh, what kind of trauma they have. I'm going to send you a signal. That's the one right there. It's going to be a peaceful signal. That's the one over there. Go over there and go talk to that one. It feels like peace. It feels like you know them. They look familiar. You think you know them from last life, lifetime. But no, that's just the energy. That's just the light. That's just a signal that we're sending to you to let you know it's okay. The way is open for you over there. That feels good. That feels like home. Because you decided to check into here that I'm going to make everything out there easy for you based upon how you feel. Oh, because you checked in. And you didn't ignore me. <laughs> You didn't ignore what's inside of here. No, no, no. You attuned yourself to understand what's inside of here because you know, as within, so without. Oh, nerd as it is in heaven. You know these things all oh, because you spent time to check in and you listen to that little something said kind of voice. You listen to that something said voice in that little cut feeling and you you listen to it so much that it got louder and louder and louder and now you just you just know <laughs> because you checked in and you stopped ignoring yourself and you loved on yourself you took care of yourself and you put yourself back on the pedestal oh and if i be lifted up just like they say in religion because you are god oh if i be lifted up i have enough power to draw all things to me <laughs> Oh, the all oh, good and perfect gifts come from God, right? Oh, yeah, that came from me. So they got to have some good stuff out here that I got to experience because good stuff is in here because I've checked in in here and everything is okay in here. But because I'm I'm governed underneath this this law of polarity where, where if they're going to be good, they, they're going to have some so-called bad. But all of it is all perfectly orchestrated for my becoming stage. But... All of the cells of my body and my organs and everything that, uh, uh, that that is part of my creation just lets me know when it's for me and when it is not because I checked in. I hope you all are getting this here reflections. It's so important for you to know yourself. It's so important that you spend time with yourself so important that you understand yourself because love real love true love is understanding do you understand yourself do it do you understand yourself from an energetic level from the atom to the christ conscious one i'm talking about molecules here i'm talking about particles here i'm talking about electrons and protons here i'm talking about you it's a bit self, your 0 0.01 physical self, and also your 99.999 spiritual self. Do you understand? Do you understand the totality of who and what you are, God? Do you love yourself? Because <laughs> love is understanding. Understanding your superpower. Understanding your mind. Understanding your body understanding why i respond like this here understanding your passion understanding your traumas healing from those things opening up your heart to love anyway but do you understand why you are loving because you are love <laughs> but do you understand that though are you doing that because pastor had said mama had said oh because nice matters no it don't you need to understand understanding matters <laughs> Woo. know yourself love yourself i've changed my thinking gained the confidence but i realize i'm scared to manifest bigger still i realize that i'm stunting my own growth I realize that I'm so powerful and I'm fearful of all of my power because I've realized I'm not just the body. I realize that I'm operated in multiple dimensions simultaneously. So how do I get out of this place of fear? Understanding that fear, walking into that fear. <laughs> By telling that fear, I see you, we gonna do it anyway. 
you know, I, I went on a road trip one day. I went on a road trip from Louisiana to Arizona in a U-Haul, the biggest U-Haul that they ever had, you know, that they carried to sell, you know, rent out or whatever at the U-Haul place. And on top of that, I had a trailer behind it. And it had my car on it. And so I was with other people. I wasn't by myself. I was with other people and we were all rotating and driving. But the other people, not me, I wanted to stop. The other people wanted to keep on going. This was supposed to be a 22-hour drive. And it turned into a 32-hour drive because we, nobody, did not calculate the fact that being that we had a bigger U-Haul plus a trailer, that we couldn't go as fast as what the, you know, the GPS, the map questing said it would, you know, take or B to get here. And so the map quest they, they estimated the twenty two hours of being, you know, sixty five miles an hour, but we would only be able to drive maybe fifty, fifty five because we was hauling a house full of furniture and one of the vehicles. I was so sleepy, I was so tired. I didn't want to keep going and, and, and safety wise it wasn't the very the most safe thing to do but there was fear in my heart when it was always my time to drive but I did my turn because the others were sleeping the others were feeling fatigued and as I took my turn my palms were sweating sweat was rolling down my back I was nervous I was afraid. I was in flight or flight moment. They were coyotes and deers in the middle of the night sitting on the side of the road. <laughs> you couldn't see so far in front of you. And so Texas, I didn't realize Texas is big, y'all. Texas, it took us so long to get through Texas. And getting through there, I didn't realize that Texas had mountains. I knew Arizona had mountains, but Texas had mountains too. And they were really, really steep mountains. And in this you how the brakes didn't work. The brake didn't work so good. You know, it's like you go down the, the mountain and, and it's like you could hear the, the, the U-Haul in the trailer just whistling. And it's like, oh my God, it was like you were on a ride and it wasn't a fun ride. You had like an amusement park and you wasn't really amused. <laughs> and I was afraid. I was so afraid. I was so afraid. I have never been in, my, in that place of fear before in my life. I, I didn't even think for a moment that I was going to make it until I grabbed a hold of that fear. I said, to hell with this here. We, I didn't come out here and manifest this move to die. Hello, fear. And as I grabbed that steering wheel with my hands trembling, with the sweat coming off my palms, and I'm still driving. Not today. We're going to make it today. See, sometimes when you create this fear, you have to be the one to destroy that thing. And so when we made it to our destination, <sighs> the adrenaline rush had subsided but what I realized and I was so thankful to make it here but what I realized that day was I created through my fear some more fear so after I got the, that run taken care of I was on a typical bridge in a state that I came from just you know just 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 driving and I was afraid that I was going to die on the bridge because the bridge and then that I had been traveling over all my life, it became chaotic and scary to me because it reminded me of the mountains that I was on when I was in the U-Haul, right? So now, now at that moment in, in, my, in my life, because that fear was crippling me, it started to, to, to grow because because we, we can cre recreate these things in our mind because our mind has memory of these things and it begin to grow and then now I'm on I'm in, in Louisiana where I grew up at. I'm in I'm on the Greater New Orleans Bridge and I'm afraid the Mississippi I'm afraid of the Mississippi River water now. But I never had that before. All because I started this fear. All because I didn't face this fear. So when I really cl put closure in Louisiana, now I'm out here with all of these mountains. And when I first got here, my first assignment was to get, get in the car. Just me handling my fear because I know I created this thing. And so I know with mindfulness, I have to destroy this thing. And by destroying this thing, I got to face this thing. So I got in my car on Saturday early morning and I went. I 
went past Sedona, the highest elevation. I think they call it out here Flag Flagstaff, Flagstaff, Arizona. Yeah, where it's really, really steep. Where you look, you you driving and you look, you turning, going up a mountain. You look right over here and you see the nothingness. The top of nothingness. And once you get on this path to go at this thousands of feet elevation, there ain't no U-turn, ain't no exit here. You gotta face yourself. And so that was equivalent to me saying, hello. I'm alone, I'm by myself. What your ass gonna do? Because what you're not gonna do is cripple me. I'm gonna be able to, to get on the bridge with my peace of mind. I want my peace of mind back, fear. Where you at? I'm here. I showed up. I got my bike on the back, in the back seat of my car too. I brought my bike because I knew when I got to the top of this high mountain, I knew you were gonna be here again. And I was gonna ride my bike down this mountain even if I trembled, I'm going to face you. It's just like that bully in school. If you don't face him, he going to always take your lunch money. But you're going to get tired one day of him taking your lunch money. You're going to want to eat. And you're going to walk up to him and say, look, you're going to have to beat my ass because I'm eating today. That's how you face fear. That's how you deal with fear. <laughs> you say, where is your victory? Cause, Cause I'm here and I'm not running no more. I'm tired of running from you. I gotta face you. And as I face you over and over, you gonna bow down to me. You must bow down to me. And you gonna, you gonna be equivalent to that in the biblical text where you say, I will take your enemies and make them your footstool. Because guess what fear? I'm coming back out there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that's where I'm doing my retreats at, right up there on top of the Mount Fear. <laughs> you about to be my footstool. <laughs> and that's how you play with it because you created it and you have to go up in that closet and make them skeletons fall down and be destroyed. You got to clear the fear out of your own closet because you created it. Sometimes we create that fear through religion, the book of man, the fear of death. Fear of hell. The fear of Jesus cracking through the sky and saying, oh, you're not a good enough servant. Whatever your fear is, you got to face it because it's aching to you facing you. <laughs> That's what it is. You got to face you and be unequitable with facing you. <sighs> yeah. Manifest anyway. Believe anyway. Say your affirmations anyway. Over and over. And when when, you, when your fear tactics come in your mind and tell you, oh, this is this is foolish. This crap is not gonna work. Keep on saying it anyway. Go general with it. Go general with it to release their resistance and say, Well, I know that they have to have other people that was in this place where they were afraid to manifest. I'm pretty sure and then say somebody famous or Say somebody that you aspire to be, you know, kind of energetically like. You say, well, so-and-so may have been fearful at one point. Yeah. But she made it. What has been done to others and for others, that same thing can be done for me. I'm pretty sure there are probably a lot of famous people that was afraid one day. Mm. They probably was, they probably was broke too. They probably didn't know what they were doing one day. But look at them. They're soaring and stuff. If they could do it, I can do it. Yeah. Nikola Tesla. I'm, I'm pretty sure he was uncertain in some of his research one day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe Billy, Billy Carson, you know. Maybe he, one day, he was... He was probably uncertain about this manifestation stuff too. But it's the thing about it, I think maybe the thing about it is that them people didn't let the fear stop them. So, okay, I'm going to be like them. I'm, go I'm not going to let it stop me. 
I'm going to keep on doing this thing. And moment by moment, or better yet, energetically, momentum by momentum, I'm building up momentum to be a greater version of myself door by door by door by door. Just like they did. <laughs> I'm facing my fear by revisiting myself. Just like they did. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you change this edible. You change it through thought. By renewing your mind, you got to change that thought. I could do it. I could see myself there. I'm easy with myself. It's okay. I'm getting better. Oh, yesterday I was really a Debbie Downer. I used to be so negative. Mm -hmm. mm. I remember when I didn't even want to open up my heart to nobody. Look at me now. I remember when I was a little introvert, I didn't even want to talk to people. Look at me talking. So you're patting yourself on the back. You're releasing the resistance. You you are you're giving a new signal saying, what has been done for others can be done for me. Life is happening through me, not to me. You're saying, this is what you're saying energetically to your new signal. Oh, dear. There are no setbacks, only setups for something greater. You're saying energetically, I'm worthy. Mm -hmm. I believe I'm worthy. You know, yesterday I didn't believe I was worthy. But you know what? Even five seconds ago, if you didn't believe you were worthy, all you got to do is say, I could be worthy. Then you could ask yourself, since your subconscious mind is tapped into infinite intelligence, hey, show me what worthy feels like. And then you're going to get a thought, and then you're going to be like, oh, mm. oh, it might even show you a little picture, you know, a picture of yourself, maybe, you know, with the lifestyle that you desire, whatever that might be. And you're like, oh, that's what, that's what worthy feels like. Mm, you can like that. You can like that worthy feeling. You can look that worthy feeling. You just take that feeling and carry that feeling with you. Every now and then during your day, you have that feeling. Yeah, you repeat that feeling. And so by you repeating that feeling, what you're doing is sending out that feeling. And anything that you send out, it can't come back to you void. It beats the feeling of unworthy that you were sending out. So this is a thought thing. Thought by thought by thought. You could be, do, or have anything. All you got to do is put, put your mind to it. That's how you do it. You could do that with sending out a signal with, show me what being a billionaire feels like. Show me what being healthy feels like. Show me what being a CEO feels like. Show me what, what it feels like to own my own home. Show me what it feels like to own my dream car. Show me. Oh, you got to do. Because ask, the Bible was teaching us this here, and you shall receive. Knock, and the door shall be open to you. Anyone that asks, they shall receive that thing. And those that knock, that door always open. So when a door open, don't just shut the door back. Keep the door open. Open up the door to the idea of whatever it is that you're wanting. Open up the door. The door is a door to your mind. The door to your mind must be open to the change. Instead of getting off this live and closing the door. See, that's what we mess up at. We get off the live and we close the door again. We get off the live and that means we go back into our box. And inside of our box, we might be in that box with our limited, limited thinking again. Meanwhile, when you were on the live, you came out and explored the boundless possibilities of the universe. But the live's over now. I'm going back in. I'm going back in. I'm going to go and do. I'm going to go do what I've been doing. Until somebody else goes live and then I'll come out and play a little bit. Stop going back in. <laughs> you got to stop going back in there. You got to free yourself from being up in there. And that takes consciousness. That takes you being a conscious creator. Thought by thought by thought. Commanding that this could be a good day. Commanding alignment. That's when you're no longer ignoring yourself. You got to pay attention to 
yourself. And this some for some people, this is like re-renting the brain because we've already been brainwashed the other way. It's re-renting that brain off and, and, and kind of being more selfish. You know, all, all some people like they've been told, um, no, don't be selfish. Well, what people saying is, no, pay attention to how I feel. Come on. This crap is hard out here. Please pay attention to how I feel. Don't pay attention to yourself. Don't go in there. Because if you go in there, you, you're going to realize that you're God. And then I'm going to be stuck, stuck out here to do all these other things that you were doing. I'm going to have to do them for myself. And I'm going to have to be accountable if you go in and be selfish. No, pay attention to me. Because nice matters. And then you come here for me. No, you didn't. I came here for you. To explore you, God. And nice don't matter like you think it matters. You matter. Your mind matters. Your journey matters. Your heart matters. The cells of your body matters. Everything about you matters because life is happening through you. And those people that you see. <laughs> Just really much an expression of you, just like the 12 disciples were. Different personalities of the Christ conscious one around him. Them little Debbie doubters. Yeah, them little doubting Thomases. Peter, who, who can't even walk on the water. He pay attention to all of the drama and stuff that's going on. Them sick folk in your life, yeah, the ones that, um, that's the dry bones right there. Waiting for breath to be breathed into them so they could leave. But they waiting on your breath to be breathed into them so they can live. Prophesy, son of man, the biblical text says. Say unto these dry bones, oh ye. <laughs> dry bones. Hear the word of the Lord. I will cause breath to enter to you and you shall live. You can't say that to your reflections until you cause life to enter into you. Until you resurrect yourself by the renewing of your mind, oh God. <laughs> And then you realize that all of them people out there ain't nobody but the 12 disciples in your life. And they are only happening through you, through your mind. And you could control them and you can manipulate them. But you first got to learn how to manipulate your own thoughts. A mind. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. Terrible thing to waste. Let's say. <laughs> Somebody say cook goddess. That's funny. Hey Jay, thank you for being here. Hey Molly Mob. I say best kept. Hi. Yeah. Hi yourself, edible. Yeah. And is Cherry said and is. I have Arizona on the bucket list. Definitely want to see the Grand Canyon. Yeah. Yeah, me and a friend actually is supposed to be going to see that um next weekend, the Grand Canyon. I never went yet. But yeah. Uh, Arizona is a beautiful place. I feel energetically these mountains have such a high frequency. Nature and the sun is like a different type of sun from the south sun in New Orleans. It's like the sun is like on your shoulder out here. It's like that dry heat out here that you could kind of like feel internally. Like, right? So you have to stay hydrated out here. But what I feel is like energetically that it to me feels like heaven on earth it feels like a connection it feels like ascension it feels feels like spirituality consciousness it feels like um a plethora of minerals even in the rich red rocks and you know mountains and sand everything if 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 i was the type of person that um, took the bible literally i would say oh 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 jesus and the so-called disciples had to have <laughs> prayed on one of these mountains out here especially those that are in Sedona at the very peak of Sedona I love it I think it, I know that it was the best decision because the first time that I came and visited this state I said out loud this this how you know you could <laughs> and you can look back on some of the things that you spoke you sent the word out and it, it didn't come back to your voice I said out loud to this guy I said man it feels like in here it feels like a place that i would just retire at and live in peace i'm coming back is what i said no maybe about 
three, four years, who knew I was going to do early retirement? <laughs> who knew that I was going to be out in New Orleans tied to hurricanes? And who knew that I was going to be manifesting a house out here in Arizona? Who knew that I'll be here right now, today? <laughs> so I sent out that spoken word and it didn't come back to me void. That's akin to you going within and knowing yourself. Got to know yourself first. You got to see it inside of you. You got to feel it inside of you first before it even going to show up out here. It's like people say, well, why is this happening to me? Why, 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 why? What, what, what you mean, why? It's in here. As within, so without, what you mean, why? Why I keep running into these type of relationships? Wait, hold up. Why? Because it's in here. The thought of you running away from, I mean, running into these type of relationships is in here. So it has to come out here. And until, if it's in here, you got to deal with why it's in here and purge it from being in here. So this in here could be pure enough. So outside here, you have pure, healthy, prosperous, or whatever type of relationship you all desire. But it got to be in here. For you to have it or experience it. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I need this live recording. Thank y'all for being here. That was on my heart and I just wanted to come and just post that video. Because I needed to get it out because it was in here. Because <laughs> it was in here and it wanted to get out here. Because life happens through me, not to me. And if I could help one of my reflections along the way, I'm happy to do so. Because I want to leave that that legacy behind. Do you speak in tongue? That sounds like a religious thing. No, I'm not religious at all anymore. Asuka? Asuka Roy? No, I don't. Oh, I don't. I could speak, I could, I could do with the church, I could be condoling more with a tie, you want me to say it like that, that's gonna make you feel like, um, like it was from God or something, but I don't do that, I wouldn't be, I'd be lying if I did that, but I could do it, I could say, I could do it, I could say, I believe in, um, I believe in gifts, <coughs> excuse me, I believe in gifts of being able to speak. But I also believe in those speakers being able to interpret, but a ter interpretation that is not based upon where they are. See, when people, like in religion and stuff, when they speak it in tongues and they're prophesying, it's based upon their perspective, their thoughts, their kingdom, so to speak, like, right? And so, I believe that everyone has the innate ability to tap into source energy and to get their messages for themselves that's what i believe now others have gifts of discernment and, and everything but it, 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 it you know just like they're gonna have the false prophets so to speak they're gonna have the real ones up in here and so when it is not pertaining to a greater good for them like some like uh for example some, a prophet saying hey god told me to tell you to join this church and to get in the choir and to da 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 and give this and that and the third. Even if that's something you may have been thinking of, I still believe that this person, the vessel, being that it will benefit them, if they're the pastor, it'll benefit them. Sometimes those things be so biased, you know. People use the fact that they're a prophet, so to speak, or a pastor, so to speak, to manipulate. It'd be about power and control. If you have that thought, do that thing. Because you God, if you have that thought, ask yourself, how does it feel to join that church? How does it feel to, you know, be in that quiet and see if that thing feels good to you? Because you're the operant power in your journey, not other people. I don't believe in, in people pleasing is what I'm saying here. I believe in using your gift to pretty much tell people what you see. And really, even I'm, a, I'm gifted in that area where I do consultations and I can tell people what I see. But what I see, here's this here really important thing that I believe anybody that ever paid anybody to do a reading or whatever should know. They're telling you the energy that they're reading at that point in time. Okay? At that point in time. It's, okay, so if it's not an unbiased prophecy or reading 
It's about that time. So at any point, you can change your mind, right? And you could change your frequency. And so now that time or your feeling is different now. <laughs> and so what the people said to you at an older time could no longer be valid no more because you changed your mind. And so now what? Was that a false prophet? Because they told you something that you changed your mind on? No, you're God. You have the power to manipulate the energy and transform it into anything you want it to be. So I like to teach instead for people to go within and they find their own answer. Keep your little physical money in your pocket and go in spiritually and, and retrieve your own uh, book of life if you're from religion, your own Akashic rec record if you're from spirituality, and you open up that thing. We only, whether you're in religion or spirituality, we're only talking about going in your subconscious mind and asking yourself a question because that's where the kingdom of God is. It's in your, your first eye, your all-seeing eye which religion call maybe a place that you don't want to go because the devil's up in here and the demons up in here. No, no, no. Infinite intelligence is in there. All knowing is in there. And so this is equivalent to what in the, in the movie, the matrix, when Neo went to go see the Oracle and she said, no, you're not the one. And he began to believe that crazy crap. Like, well, she said I wasn't the one, you know, I, but then, when something happened to Morpheus and he didn't want Morpheus to die, he renewed his mind. And so whatever the oracle said in that moment in time was then irrelevant because she was supposed to be the prophet in that time. He changed his mind because we are God and we could change our mind at any point in time. He changed his mind because he wanted to go and save Morpheus. And then he realized, I am the one. But he had to put his mind on the fact that he was the one first. He had to believe. He had to believe when he was when that that love for Morpheus. He had to just believe. Wait, if he if Morpheus believed in me like this here, why am I not believing in myself? I am the one. So that's why I feel like you go in. I encourage you to go in. It's in, in the, you don't need a prophet to go in. You don't need a reader to go in. All you need is your mind to go in. All you need to do is be getting comfortable with going in. Just go on in. <laughs> Thank you for the rose. I appreciate that. Hi, Jeannie. Hi, I, I Janelle. I think I Janelle. I think I'm saying that right. I hope I did. Anyway, any more questions? I got my message out that I wanted to say. Oh, and I feel so good. I feel so good. Any more questions before I wrap this up? If y'all want to have um some questions. If not, I'm going to end this thing. But if you have anything you want to um, ask me, but really, I would rather you go in and just ask yourself. I, you know, because actually, the ones that were here and the ones that are still here, you're the ones that had a question on how to go in. You asked already before you got here. This is how cold you are with it. You asked yourself. How do I change this? What would it take? What do I have to do? I'm not really understanding myself. Just, 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 just yet. Yeah. What do I trust? Maybe you act. Just, I'm talking about habitual thinking. This is how you asked, and then when you ask, you got. And so, in a simulated environment, me, I showed up on your phone, but I only showed up because your subconscious mind allowed me to come through that day, only because you asked that question. And so you ain't gonna never be just, we ain't gonna never just have you out here just wondering, God. You were asked and, and I popped in. Thank you for letting me pop in with your answer. But really and truly, your answer really just coming from your subconscious mind. It's not really coming from, from, from me, because I am your subconscious mind. <laughs> here yielding to you what's in your mind already. So, I, so you could remember huh, who you are. Oh, I look a little different from you. Yeah, so you don't think I'm part of you. Uh -huh. It gets a little scary like that sometimes. But I want to let you know that you're here all alone. You're here all by yourself. Exploring your mind anyway. 
See, you might, you might have children, you might have a partner, you might, you know, have a mother or whatever that probably don't be in the room with you right now while you're holding that phone with you. But they really don't exist. No thing exists but you and your thoughts. <laughs> they don't exist. You don't, they don't exist until you put your eyes upon them. Yeah, until they, right here in your reality. That's the only time they exist. Outside of that, they just really existed in your mind. But even when they're there, they're not really there existing. They're just <laughs> your mind existing. Because you are all, you are all that exists. Remember that. It might sound in the beginning a little spooky. But once you get to know yourself, you will understand yourself. Everything is you. That phone you're looking at is you. The chair you may be sitting in is you. You just vibrating at all different frequencies. Because all is God. Only God exists. And so even your bad is part of God. Even your bad is working out for your good. Because it's part of God too. And we could go as far as saying even the, the so-called chitlin food that, that we'll eat. When you really get your mind made up, that's God too. <laughs> yeah, everything, all is God. We could, we could talk about this so-called government that's supposed to be governing us. When you get your mind made up, then that's part of God too. Because God is all. God is that good and that bad. And that all of those things are perfectly working to get you to evolve and have you on this experience is journey to remember yourself so in remembering yourself don't forget to ask yourself questions don't forget to check in with yourself and don't you dare ignore yourself because you're the only thing out there you're the only savior we waiting on you or you waiting on you should i say to crack the sky open and where is the sky the sky is right here <laughs> crack it open and leave it open be open minded and come out of your box stay out of your box because there's a boundless universe that you must explore there are several dimensions that you have not explored yet this is just the lowest plane but you're going to have, always have to keep this door open in order to get there there's no other way <laughs> you have to come this way the biblical text was telling you at least you come as a child you can't make it into the kingdom the child uses this human imagination it uses his mind in its playtime and that's equivalent to you keeping your door open God <laughs> you're alive yes yes hey grateful thank you for being here you're late <laughs> I'm live and you're late but anyway I'm about to close this out. Um, this video I'm going to upload to my YouTube channel since you're just coming in grateful. I'm grateful to have you and I appreciate your comments and your support. I appreciate all of you for being here. <sighs> this video was from my heart to yours, God. Go on out and be great. Be God in your kingdom because life is happening through you, not to you. Thank you for calling me forward. To, remember, to remind you that you God. Thanks so much for the message, guys. You're welcome, Molly Mo. Be blessed, babe.